Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So our Lord tells someone who is paralyzed and is just sitting there, not really being able to live any kind of real good life, hungry, thirsty, ostracized by others, because the Jews had this idea that if you had sin, if you had something wrong with you, then God was judging you. And he goes to this man, and he says, Son, be of good cheer. Thy sins are forgiven thee. It would be an odd thing to say for any of us to say. But our Lord can say it because, of course, he knew he was going to heal him. But at that point in time, he had not healed him of his paralysis. He said, Son, be of good cheer. Thy sins are forgiven thee. So much that is in the scriptures is really very simple. I'm not saying it's easy. We're just a little too complicated. But it's simple. Son, be of good cheer. Thy sins are forgiven thee. Now, I think everybody should, if they can, take care of little children. I love to do that. I happen to have the great privilege of being able to care hands-on with three of my grandchildren regularly every week. I call them my boys. I don't think their parents mind too much. They know that I don't think they belong to me, but they're in my heart, so I call them my boys. And uh, it's especially good to take care of a, a, an infant, or in the case of Ezra now, I guess he's a toddler, although I don't see him toddling much. Mostly I see him running. And the thing that's beautiful about children that I really can't get enough of, I just love to see, is that they're happy in the moment. Now, obviously, they have times when they're crying and then when they're pouting and when they're doing all the other things. But when they're happy, they're completely happy. Now, I had a moment a little while ago. Uh, we had a death in the family. There's, uh, Elizabeth's father died in an auto accident last week. So it's very sad, very sudden. And because of that, we were taking care of Owen some extra days. And we went swimming, Owen and myself and uh, Natalie and her boys. And we were having a beautiful time. And Natalie, despite the way I raised her, I thought I raised her right. She was listening to country music. And um, we had country music blaring out at the pool. And there was a particular song that people have heard before. I don't know the name of the artist or anything, but it's something about, I've been all over the world, I've seen sunsets, I've done this, I've done that, and yet the best place to be is in the present. And I'm listening to this song, and I am absolutely having a blast playing. At that time, I think I was holding Ezra and taking him around the pool and throwing him up at the air and catching him, and he was giggling, and it was so much fun. And yet, I was thinking about the events of the previous day. And so I wasn't really in the moment. I wasn't really in the present. I was partially in the present, and I was very happy to be with my boys. But I was also thinking, I'm not at all doing what that song's talking about. And that song's a pretty good gospel, really, when you think about it. To be in the present, to be in the present with God, to be of good cheer. I wasn't completely of good cheer. Now I was pretty cheered up by being with them, for sure, absolutely. And uh, I love to do it, and I'll continue doing it. And there's something beautiful about a, a child's smile when they're just happy. And it's also beautiful when we see an adult smiling and just happy. But I know by my own personal experience that a lot of times I have many things that are pulling at me at the same time. You do too. And we're thinking about a lot of stuff when actually we should just be in the present with God. We should be of good cheer because our sins are forgiven us. Now, if we really felt this, if, we, if this really resonated in us, then it would really order all of our behavior. We can see an example of this with the woman who was a sinner, a euphemism for a prostitute. And she had been forgiven by Christ. She had met him or talked to him in some other venue, some other time. And she had abandoned her sinful life. But you can't just abandon a sinful life and have people just say, oh, okay, now you're okay. We've been 
judging you for all these years and now all of a sudden you're just fine. You can come to the synagogue, you can be part of us, etc. There's a lot of complications in her life after she repented. But she was so thankful to God that he had forgiven her, that she wanted to make a gesture to him. So she went in to a Pharisee's house when he was having dinner, somewhat dangerous thing to do, and she washed his feet with her tears of, and with some very expensive ointment because of her gratitude, because her sins had been forgiven her. So certainly when a child is just in the moment, they're just happy. They're not thinking of anything else except that, you know, Papa's holding them upside down or that they're wrestling or that they're swimming or whatever it is. But we, when we layer on our adult sensibilities, we're no longer children. We put away the things of being a child. And it's good that we do. We should grow to maturity. We should then have this good cheer in us be the energy that makes us do things. And actually that word make, I don't like that word make. We, we're not forced to do things. There should be an inner disposition in us that makes us want to do them. Why do I take care of my boys? Because I love them. I'm not forced to do it. I love them and I want to do it. Why do I serve as a priest? Because I love God and I love you. Now, are there burdens sometimes? Yes. Are there things that make me very tired or frustrated or, or overwhelmed? Yes. But that's because of my passions and my sins. If I was really completely of good cheer that God lives within me and therefore my sins are forgiven, then there would be energy in me to do the hard things in life without that fatigue that happens so often to us. It's very simple. So we can learn a lot from a child. They're just in the moment and they're just happy and they love so, so beautifully, don't they? They have such a big heart. It opens up to anybody. Anybody that gives them a little attention and love and they love them. And then they talk about them and they brag about them and all those things. At least I see that in my boys all the time. And that's a beautiful characteristic, to have an open heart, not to have a heart that's closed off because of all the troubles in the world. Now, there's troubles. There's no doubt that there's troubles. We are all going through troubles. There's going to be more troubles. There's going to be real serious troubles for the entire world. But if we are of good cheer because our sins are forgiven us, then we live simply. Now, in another place, the Lord said, that we should be, excuse me, St. Paul said, but of course the Lord inspired him to say, that we should be continuing instant in prayer. Can you imagine what our life would be if we were instant in prayer? It's kind of an archaic way of saying it. Basically it means that we're always in prayer, that we're always in our heart, and God is in our heart, and we're always with God in our heart praying. Now, whether or not we're saying exact prayer, prayer words or whether or not we're, you know, following directions so that we have to be paying attention or doing something, operating machinery, obviously you're not literally saying the Psalter when you're doing that. But if our heart is with God, we're always instant in prayer. Could you imagine how beautiful that would be? That's the way some of the saints were, probably most of them, towards the end of their lives sometimes with still much of their life left to live, their prayer was always instant. They were always ready to pray. They were always praying. I once heard a, something about St. John Maximovich that he, somebody who knew him well said, we have to kind of get ready to pray. You know, we have to kind of prepare ourselves to pray. St. John never prepared himself to pray because he was always praying. What an idea. That's because he was of good cheer, because his sins had been forgiven him. And he had many troubles, many troubles. The things that St. John did in his life were amazing. The troubles and the perils that he went through were incredible. The places he went from, from Russia to Serbia to the Philippines, I don't know in order, 
and uh, to America, to Washington, D.C., to San Francisco, all over, to China, all these places, because he was taking care of his flock. He wasn't allowing himself any sleep. The only way he would sleep was sitting, sitting in a chair. He would never sleep laying down from the time he became a monk. But he was of good cheer he, because his sins had been forgiven. Your sins are forgiven too. You should have the same good cheer. But we have to cultivate this good cheer by ascetical exercises. See, that's the difference that I found when I became Orthodox. In Orthodoxy, we understand the weakness of our character, also the magnificence of our character. We're made in the image of God to obtain his likeness. Ain't nobody like that except us. Even the angels aren't like that. And so we have been, we're precious and beautiful and wonderful, and yet we also are very weak. And so we have to cultivate that beautiful and precious part within us. We have to remember that even though, yeah, we're, we're like paralytics, we're maybe dragging a leg or something like that because of our sins, we should be of good cheer because our sins are forgiven us. God abides in us. We are temples of the Holy Spirit. We have to remember this. Even in the midst of all the troubles that we encounter and that we will encounter in the future, all of the, whether we have a loss, like we had a, a death in the family, or whatever it is, we should be of good cheer because our sins are forgiven us. This is the way to live. This is the proper way to live. And if you are reading the scriptures and doing all those things that I tell you to do all the time, then your heart is opening to God and you actually are then able to be in the moment and just be happy because you're alive because God abides in you. And because even though you're alive now, you're going to be more alive later. That's a good thing to remember. To have sort of like resonating in your heart. And then you're instant in prayer because everything is about God. Everything that happens is under God's providence. Everything that happens that's bad is for a good reason. Everything that is good is for a good reason. Everything is good because God allows everything or disallows it or causes it. And it's all according to our needs. So if we have this understanding that, is, that God is good, that he is making us good, then what's bad? I mean, what's wrong with our day? If we're made in the image of God, the resurrection is acting within us. We are children of God, bought with a price, that God is continuing that good work in us until the end, when we will be united with him and know him in an intimate way. What could be bad? What's the bad news? There is no bad news. Not for the heart. Now, in terms of the tumult of the day, yeah, there's bad news and there's hard things and sometimes we have difficult things we go through and difficult emotions and all the rest. And the saints went through those things too. But they went through them in a different way than we do. What we do is we get knocked down by these things and we forget to pray and we really forget to be of good cheer. But if we remember this, even a little bit, then our life is just beautiful. I find an interesting sort of dichotomy in my life. I love the scriptures. I love to talk about them. I love to preach about them. And when I do preach about them, I feel very happy, very happy. And then I go with the rest of my day and something becomes too heavy for me. Something that's too hard. Something makes me very sad. Something makes me very fatigued. I'm not fatigued now at all. I could do this for another three hours. I promise I won't, but I could. I could. Because it's just, this is about as much fun as you can have to talk about the scriptures and about the beauty of God and about how wonderful it is that, that we are sinners and yet God loves us. 
And yet he's forgiven us our sins and all those things that are wrong with us, all those, uh, the paralysis that is in our heart. God is taking that away. We, all we need to do is rise and get up and take our bed and walk. But we rise and get up and then we sit back down or we lay down or we don't take our bed or we don't walk very far. All these troubles that, that make us not accept the healing that God wants to give to us. We just should just be of good cheer. Now, another reason why we have all these things going on and we're not really full of good cheer is because of our passions. Because our passions are sort of, um, they eat away at this joy. Uh, I've told you this before. Whenever the, the, the devil gives you anything, he takes something. Always. There is always flesh for flesh. Always. Always. Life for life. Always. God just gives. He never takes. And if we live in God, then there's never, never losing anything. We're always full of joy. But if we are part of the passions, if, and the, the, the apostle tells us some things which we shouldn't be doing, or that we should be doing in this epistle today, the first epistle that was read. If we're full of passions, then that dissipates our joy. And we're not of good cheer, because we're wrapped up in all these other problems, the jealousies, and the anger, and judgment, and lust, and everything else. All that ickiness that's inside of us. God didn't make us to be like that. He made us to be of good cheer. Because he's forgiving our sins. So we should be happy. Just like, like a baby is happy. Have you ever, you've seen it. I'm sure you have. You can see it if you, if you make a baby smile. They smile, their whole face smiles, doesn't it? Huh? Their whole face smiles. Their whole head smiles when they smile. It's not just their, their lips, it's not, not just their eyes, their whole face smiles. Because they're just plain old happy to see you, or happy to do this, or happy to do that, or something that's funny to them, or they like being tickled, or, or being held upside down, or running into Papa and somehow knocking him over. I always say they can't, but somehow they always do. I don't know how that happens, they're pretty strong. That's just a beautiful thing, isn't it? Why can't we have more of that? We should have more of that. We don't have it because of these sins. So he talks about different gifts, but then at the end of talking about the gifts, he, the last gifts, he says, he that exhorts, let him do it within simplicity. I think everything should be done with simplicity. Just simple, just simple. Why do we do things? Because of love. That's it, 100%. Because God loves us. And since God loves us, there's this thing in us that makes us want to love. It makes us want to get on the roof and shout from the, with all of our voice, God loves me. I don't deserve it. And God loves me. And he's forgiving my sins. And I'm getting better. And then we do things simply, just because of love. Then he says, let love be without hypocrisy. Most of the time, our love has some sort of agenda attached to it. We love in order to be loved, maybe. We love because of advantages. We love because a person gives us certain things that we like. Or we act as if we love because there's an advantage from it. Very little of our time spent when we love is actually pure love. But when we learn to have pure love, then life is beautiful. Then we have to do some of the other things. Abhor which is evil, cleave to that which is good, be kindly affectioned to one another in brotherly love, in honor prefer one another, don't be slothful in business, be fervent in spirit, serve the Lord. All these things. He says rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation. And that's, then he adds in being instant in prayer. All these things and a few other things. So there's a big list of things a Christian should be doing. But he should be doing them because they're in his heart. And the things that are in your heart that are good, have just they've got to get out. Just like a fountain 
Fountains gotta flow. <laughs> Rivers gotta run. Because that's their nature. Because they want to run. And that's the way it's going to be. So as a human being, you should want to be doing good works because it's your nature. Because God is in you. And because your sins have been forgiven. It's a beautiful thing. So usually I try to give you, you know, some sort of practical advice. But sometimes I just think we should just talk about how beautiful things are. How beautiful God is. How beautiful it is that our Lord can say, Son, be of good cheer. Your sins are forgiven you. And then back it up. <laughs> because he knows that we got problems. But the major problem is sin. He knows the other things are distractions to us and are difficult to us. He has the authority to say, be of good cheer. Your sins are forgiven you. And don't worry about the other stuff. I'm going to take care of the other stuff too. God bless you. God help you. I mean...